Okay, a quick reminder of what we are doing. We have a vector space V and we have a vector space W. And we have a linear transformation from V to W. And both these vector spaces are finite dimensional. And we have a basis of V and a basis of W. V is isomorphic to Rn. And the reason that it's isomorphic is that this coordinate mapping is an isomorphism. And W is isomorphic to Rm. And again, the reason it's isomorphic is that the coordinate mapping is an isomorphism. <laughs> now, isomorphic spaces are identical from a vector space point of view. So if this, these two spaces are identical, and these two spaces are identical, and you have this mapping from V to W, there ought to be an identical mapping from Rn to Rm. We're calling this identical mapping T hat. And we've defined T hat as follows. Um, isomorphisms are on to remember. So every vector in Rn is the image of a vector in V. That is to say, every vector here can be thought of as a coordinate vector. If we have a coordinate vector of V in Rn, we can look at V up here. We can look at T of V over here. And we can look at the coordinate vector of T of V down here. And we've defined T hat of the coordinate vector of V to be the coordinate vector of T of V with respect to C. Now, if T hat is supposed to be in some way identical to T, and T is linear, then T hat had also better be linear. And that's what we're going to discuss in this video. Let's start by investigating T of V. When we know a little more about T of V, we can look at the coordinate vector of T of V. Well, as our first step of investigating T of V, let's investigate to V. This vector is in this vector space. B is a basis, so we can write this vector in terms of these basis elements. Now we're interested in T of V. 
remember that this transformation is a linear. So when we apply it to V, it works out like this. The transformation applied to a sum is the sum of the transformations and constants pull out. Now, we're interested in this coordinate vector. So let's take the coordinate mapping of both sides of this equality. That will get us this thing we're interested in. The coordinate transformation is also linear. So when we apply it to this sum, it's the same as applying it to each of these in turn. And the constants pull out. Very well. Now we want this um, to be linear. What we have here is a linear combination of vectors and a linear combination of vectors is a matrix times a vector. And what is this vector? Well, this vector is telling you how to write V in terms of B1, B2, up to Bn. In other words, this vector is the coordinate vector of V with respect to B. Now let's go over here on the left. Here, let's make it, get it so we can see both these things. This is the same as this, the coordinate vector of T of V with respect to C. And this, is the way we've defined T hat. So T hat times this vector is a matrix times this vector. That is linear because matrix multiplication is linear. And this matrix, we're going to give a name, not, I'm afraid, a very elegant name. It's the matrix of T relative to the bases. B and C. In, um, in conclusion, then, say that we have a vector V and we've got this linear transformation, T of V. Now V 
is identical to its isomorphic image T of V is identical to its isomorphic image. And we've seen that going from here to here is done via matrix multiplication. To go from this vector to this vector, we need merely multiply by this matrix. A kind of technical term, I'm not sure your textbook uses it, is that this diagram commutes. And what that means is that if you look at this diagram, if you think of this as a starting point and this as an ending point, there are two different ways to get from here to here. You could follow this path or you could follow this path. The diagram commuting means that it doesn't matter which of those two paths you follow. Whether you go this way or this way, you'll wind up in the same place.